What's up? This is Tom Froming, and I am a little a little confused. I'm not sure if I understand. You know, I went through school. You know, I have I, I remember getting report cards, and I, maybe maybe things are different these days. You know, it's been a while since I've been in school, but you know, typically if you didn't do a really good job, you wouldn't get a good grade. Um, so, not really sure how uh, Jim Polad, what kind of a grading scale that he may be using, or uh, the methodology behind uh, his report cards, but Charlie Walters of the Pioneer Press talked with Jim Polad, and he reported uh, in his column today that Jim Polad would give the brain trust, the front office, the management staff of the Twins an A-plus, an A-plus for, for how they've done. Um, and uh, what you let me know what your grade would be for uh, the front office, for Rocco Baldelli, etc., um, we'll talk about that. I want to get into that. Uh, but I, I, I don't think I would give them an A+. Plus. And, you know, I do want to point out that, you know, it, it's easy to rip on the poll ads. A lot of people, anytime the poll ads are mentioned, it's pretty much negative from the fan base. Um, but I will say it, it is pretty admirable that they are so loyal. They really, if, if you're a Twins employee, they really, uh, you got a long chain. You know, they're... <laughs> <laughs> they are not very reactionary. Um, they give a lot of slack. And I think in a lot of ways that is admirable. Um, I think to this degree is a little ridiculous <laughs> to say that they get an A-plus in 2021. Uh, I think that's pushing it a little far. Uh, but another thing I want to point out is, you know, th this season was very much a surprise. Even, even if you had... Uh, not the expectations that most places did. Nobody expected the team to perform this poorly. Nobody. Um, so I think it is easy, you know, to say after the fact, you know, be able to poke holes in all the logic and, and point at all the things that were done poorly and that didn't go well now um, when you have the hindsight 2020 thing. Um, so I think that's important to keep in mind as well. But, you know, to me, this this is a, we're, we're in year five. We're we're five years in to Derek Falvey's and Thad Levine's reign here, and you know the things that we would look for for somebody running the Twins we're not seeing, uh, and so that's where my when I'm evaluating the front office when I'm evaluating uh, this team where my mind goes. The whole thing with the Twins is where is the pitching? That's always always the discussion, and I realize no team in baseball feels like they have enough pitching. This is not unique to the Twins, but it has been uh, the, the problem for so long, and it's been so skewed. Things are worse now than ever that the Twins have a much stronger lineup than they do a pitching staff, and it's worse than it's ever been, and that's basically the opposite of what Derek Falvey was brought in for. You know, coming from Cleveland, a team that had excellent pitching staffs and didn't really have offenses in his, his term there, um, we were hoping for that. And then in off seasons, they talked about acquiring impact pitching, acquiring impact pitching, developing a pitching pipeline. And here we are five years later. What do we have to show for this with this group? We have Bailey Ober. Okay, great. And Randy Dobnak, who's a complete question mark. And those are the two best starting pitchers that this regime has developed. If you want to give him credit for Joe Ryan on a technicality, they, they didn't really develop him, but to identify him, to then they, you know, give him credit. They did sign Cruz and re-sign him and then trade him for Ryan. So if you want to give him credit for that, that's fine. But we're still only talking about Bailey Ober, Joe Ryan, and Randy Dobnak in this five-year period. And I understand that, that some of the best talent in this system got hurt or kind of had their years derailed, and hopefully there are more coming there are definitely guys in the high minors in this organization that, that we can see being major league contributors, potentially being plus plus players. Um, but again, we're in year five. How, how <laughs> there should have been more that surfaced between them coming in and now. It shouldn't have taken this long in the first place. So it's like how much more how much more do we have to wait? And we've seen with pitching prospects, I mean Fernando Romero was the number one prospect in this system at one point. Steven Gonzalez was a huge prospect. There's just there's no guaranteeing any of these guys are gonna become anything. So it's really, really hard uh for me to 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 muster up any kind of positivity. Even 
with this front office, even considering some of those things of, you know, things didn't go the way anyone expected. Even when you look to the bullpen, really the only guy there is Jorge Alcala. So it's not like they've just, they've been developing pitchers, but they've ended up in the bullpen. That's all they have in five years. That's all they have to show. That is unacceptable. (laughs) So you can see now why (laughs) once the season was sunk, that I kind of pivoted this channel to talk mostly about kind of the games at hand, the positive stuff, the minor league stuff, the the uh, the prospects coming up to the system, the things that are fun to talk about. Because, man, when I get into other stuff like this, I just get frustrated. Um, it's not fun to talk about. I don't think it's, it's probably not fun to listen to. <laughs> so, you know, but I, hopefully you probably can relate to some of this frustration. This franchise, and this has always been the case with the Minnesota Twins, you look at any period of success for them, and its I don't think this is going to change anytime soon. The way that you are going to build a winning team, a potential championship team, is through building from within, developing players. You're not going to build a whole championship caliber club trading for players. You're certainly not going to build a championship caliber club as the Minnesota Twins signing free agents. So you have to do a great job at developing, drafting, developing, signing guys internationally, uh, making trades for prospects. Um, These are all the things that when the Twins are in the upswing, when they're having great years, they've done those things well. And this front office has done a poor job, a poor job with that stuff. I don't know how, if you look at it, how you can come away with any other... uh, conclusion than that and it's so frustrating that in this year where all this stuff happens we also see Huskari Noah and Luis Hill materialize with their team's two pitching prospects the Twins traded away um it, uh, we're again I don't want to get I just wanted to talk about this particular <laughs> piece of news we'll get there's months we have a long off season there's months to get into this stuff and we'll I'll definitely talk about that more but I just <laughs> with even with all of the unforeseen things that could have happened and any kind of free passes you want to give this front office, um, it is undeniable. They have done a poor job of getting pitching into this system and developing it, getting it to surface at the major league level. And that is how we got here for the most part. Because this offense, even in 2021, with as bad as the Twins have been, the, the lineup's been fine. It's been the pitching. And that's I'm tired of that story. I'm tired of it. 